Good evening, good evening, good evening. Blessings to you. Hope everybody is doing well on this evening. I'm Apostle Dr. Alfreda, and I bring you greetings from the Life with Jesus Kingdom Ministries. Amen with Jesus Christ is Lord. And we want to thank God for this Wednesday night where we get an opportunity, amen, to look into God's word. Amen. So we hope that you have your Bibles and we hope that you have your notebooks and your pads and so we can study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so over the last couple of weeks, we like to teach in series because when we teach in series, you can sort of suck all the juice out and chew up on all the meat. And uh, so it's just a wonderful way to teach and it's a wonderful way to learn. And so we have been talking about the abiding life, uh, abiding in Christ, the benefits of abiding in Christ, what it means to abide in Christ. He tells us in his word in the book of St. John, chapter 15, verse 7, he says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can ask whatever you will, amen, and God will do it unto you. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a beautiful promise? And so the same way that the branches cannot survive, if you pop a branch off a tree, okay, it's disconnected from the juice, from the, from the source, uh, from the energy. And so sooner or later it begins to wither, dry up and die. And so that's how it is with our life in Christ. We must stay connected to him. We must abide in him. He, he is the source. See, uh, he, he is everything. And so we want to stay connected in him. So it's a two-way street. We abide in him. His word abides in us. Now, he is one with his word. He cannot be separated from his word. The Bible tells us that in the beginning uh, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. So God is one with this word. And so we read the scriptures and, you know, so it tells us that, you know, for us to abide in him and for his word to abide in us. So what we want to do over the next couple of weeks is sort of break it down, you know, in, you know, simple terms, practical terms, layman terms, so that you can understand what it means to abide, why you need to abide so that you can begin to abide if you're not abiding. See, and if you are abiding, then you just want to get deeper. You want to go deeper and deeper and deeper in him. So this is what we are doing. So we thank you for being here with us uh, on tonight. So when we think about you know, how abiding works, now, Jesus says a lot. He, Jesus didn't say a whole lot, but what he said was enough. <laughs> He, he told us in his word, he tells us that he is the way. He tells us that he's the truth. He tells us that he is the life. And he also tells us that he is the light. Now, originally, I was going to like bring you all four bullet points tonight and sort of overload you. Uh, I didn't want to overload you. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, we're going to break it down over the next several weeks. And so we're just going to take one uh, at a time one pronoun at a time and break that down to make sure that you get a good understanding. God tells us in his word, amen. And all you're getting, get an understanding. So God wants us to understand and he wants us to get the knowledge that is available to us in his word because we perish because of a lack of it. And it is not God's desire for us to be ignorant whatsoever. Okay. So let's look tonight at Jesus being the light. Okay, Jesus says, I am the light. Let's find out what he means and how this is, equates to your abiding, the abiding factor. You abiding in him. Okay, so, so what does, you know, how does this all connect together? Okay, and so when we think about the word light, and light is such a beautiful thing right now, and I'm sitting here uh, in my library and, um, you know, got the light songs. So I don't want to, you know, come to you all in the dark. And you say, well, who is that lady? I, all we saw was, you know, this dark figure. No, we turned on the lights. Okay, we turned on the lights. We thank God for light. It was so beautiful 
uh, I was with uh, my granddaughter. I have two, three, whew, three beautiful granddaughters and uh, two grandsons. And I was with my granddaughter, the youngest one, a couple weeks ago. And uh, in the morning, she said, uh, Ma, she said, Grandma, she said, the sun is here. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. The sun is here. For her even to have paid attention uh, to the sun rising and setting, and she noticed that the sun was there. And I, I just thought those, you know, I'll take those words forever. It's just so simple and just so pure. Uh, the sun. But we know, beloved, when we think about light, okay, how light makes things visible. Okay, if you're looking for something, you know, and the, the, the electricity in my community uh, went out the other night, uh, you know, because the thunderstorms were just so bad and so severe. When the lights went out, we couldn't see a thing. <laughs> you know, if you couldn't find your flashlight, you know, or couldn't find, you know, a candle or whatever, Okay, you was, you know, feeling your way around. But when the lights came back on, now we have visibility. Okay, so we could see because light brings a visibility. It also illuminates when we think about light. Light is bright, okay, and it's not heavy. You know, you, you can't really feel the light. It's not a burden. You know, really, it's a, I, love, I love the mornings. I'm an early morning person. And I love the mornings. I love to see the sunrise and the light. But now, when the Bible speaks about light and Jesus speaks about light, and speaks about, equates himself with light, uh, he is giving us and sharing with us several symbols. And there's a few, but we're not going to talk about all of them tonight. But just to give you a quick rundown, we're talking about holiness, knowledge, wisdom, grace, especially hope. When he speaks about light, the Lord is talking about hope. He's talking about his revelation. See? And he's also talking about truth. Truth, 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 truth. Let me tell you something. Light and truth are, you know what I mean? They go together. You cannot have light and untruth. <laughs> you cannot have a lie and truth. You just, you know, they just don't mix together. OK, so this is what the Lord is talking about. And there's several scriptures in the Bible that speaks in reference to light. And we just want to share a few with you, them with you tonight. We pray that you have your notebook. We pray that you have your pencils, your pads. Jot these scriptures down and, you know, take a look at them tonight and your devotion on tomorrow and, and see what the Lord has to say. You know, now we're talking about the Lord's light and we're definitely talking about intensity because the Lord is not coming across dull. You know how sometimes you get like a 15 watt light bulb, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you can't hardly see a thing on that 15 watt light bulb. But then when you remove the 15 watts and put in 100 watts, now you have all this illumination. All right? And let me tell you, our God is fully illuminated and he wants to illuminate our understanding, the eyes of our understanding, because he wants us to see. He wants us to see with our spirit, not only with our physical eyes, he wants us to see with our spiritual eyes, the brightness, the brightness of God's light. The Bible says that when Moses went, amen, and shut in, Moses had a 40-day shut in with the Lord. 40 days, 40 nights, he didn't eat or drink anything. They said when Moses came down from the mount, his, he was glowing so strong, they could not even look at Moses. Moses had to cover his face. Because that's how Moses was shining. Why? Because he was reflecting the brightness and the glory of the Lord. We think about light, beloved. Light is essential to our health and our well-being. See? And you take all the light off planet Earth and what? Mm -mm, it won't be long. It won't be long. We all be extinct. <laughs> so why? Because we need light. So the Bible speaks about light. It speaks about Jesus being the light of the world. Amen. So here, Jesus is the spotlight. He is the spotlight. Now, right now, and I'm talking to you as an instructor, as an apostle, uh, doctor, you know, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm a servant. You don't really need a title to teach. All you need is the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. I know people that don't have a doctorate. It never was called to the apostle, office of the apostle, or, or pastor, or, or, or evangelist. But let me tell you something, 
they can, they can break down the word. Why? Because it's the Holy Ghost in them. See, Jesus' 12 disciples was unlearned men. They did not have a college degree. Okay? Now, Paul was in a different category. Okay? But for the other ones, amen, they didn't have a college degree. Probably didn't have a high school diploma, nor a GED. But the Bible tells us they turned the world upside down. Hello, somebody. Why? Because you can be educated according to the world standard, but empty according to the spirit. You don't have anything in you. See? But then on the other hand, you can be full of the Holy Ghost and power and not still have, you know, a very high level of learning. Now, both of them will be nice, but both of them is not necessary. All right? So let's just make it plain right now. Okay, so here in the word, Jesus is the spotlight. Right now, I'm the spotlight. I'm talking to you. Um, if you have some questions, you can put them in the comment section. I'm going to take a look at them in a minute. I want to see, take you through this because I don't believe in holding all night. I just want to get to the point, make sure you get the point. Amen. Because there's always something more to say. We can't say it all in one setting. I know some people that try. They come and they want to teach you the whole Bible, all 66 books. <laughs> and one Bible study. <laughs> we don't roll like that. We ain't rolling like that over here. All right. So Jesus is the spotlight. Okay. He is the heavenly light. Amen. That coming down from above. Somebody need to say thank you. But now when we think about light, beloved, now we got to be careful when we talk about this word light. Because the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number 4. It says, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yes. Okay. So every time, because, you know, you had this epiphany, you saw, you know, this brightness of light and, you know, you thought it was God visiting you. Not necessarily. Because <laughs> Satan knows how to transform himself to an angel of light. Now, he is not an angel of light. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us in several places that Satan is the prince of darkness. Okay, he don't visit darkness every now and then. He is the prince of darkness. But yet Satan has limited powers and temporary limited powers because soon and very soon, is all those powers that be taken away when he's cast into the abyss. Okay. But Satan does have the ability to transform himself into an angel of light. That's how he probably tricked Adam and Eve. Well, more directly tricked Eve. And then Eve tricks, then she seduced her husband, Adam. See? And that's probably how he gets, uh, you know, whoever he gets. Even the very elect of God, if it was possible, he aiming at us. Why? Because if unless we have that gift of discernment, and I'm going to share with you how we can tell the difference between the angel of light, okay, when it's coming from, see, Satan is darkness who can transform himself into the angel of an angel of light. But with God, amen, he is not darkness. And I'm going to share with you a scripture right now. In him is no darkness. <laughs> See, so with God, he's not transforming himself. Amen. He's revealing himself for who he is. When Satan, If Satan was to reveal himself for who he is, all you're going to see is darkness. Because yeah, that's all there is. See, but Satan has trickery. And that's why he walks to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, because he's full of tricks. Oh, he got a lot of tricks. <laughs> Trick or tree. Okay. First John chapter number one, verse number five says this. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. So you see the difference? Satan is the prince of darkness. God, God Almighty, Jehovah Jireh, and if there is no darkness in him, I don't care how the strength of your magnifying glass, I don't care what equipment and tools you're using, you are not 
going to be able to locate any darkness in God because there can nothing be found because he is light. You know, so it's the same as I was sharing with someone today as I was out doing some missionary work. Okay, so now the devil is a liar. The Bible tells us that. So the devil can't tell the truth. Anything that the devil tells you is a lie because he can't tell the truth because he can't. Now, flip that over. And because God is not a liar, God cannot lie. So anything that God tells you is the truth. Even if God was able to open his mouth and speak a lie, it would be the, the lie would turn into the truth because he can't lie. Well, here it is in the scripture. God is light. He can't be anything else but light. He can't, there's no darkness in him. There's nothing to be found. See? And so if this light representing hope, we can find hope in him. We can find truth in him. We can find goodness in him. His light represents goodness. Why? Because this is who he is. I didn't say this is what he does. I said this is who he is. See? Some people go to work every day. They're working jobs. They hate. They hate the job. Don't like the job. All they want is the paycheck because that's what they do, okay? But no, not with God. This is who he is. He is light. Then we move on in First John. Let's look at verse number six. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Here the Bible is calling you a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. If you say you have fellowship with God, okay, I, oh, I'm saved. I have fellowship with God. I abide in God. God abide in me, me. Okay, so you say you're abiding in the Lord and his word is abiding in you, but you're walking in darkness. Well, that's contrary, baby. Uh, that ain't it. That don't add up. See, you're a liar, and you're lying right now. And all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. And that's the truth. See, so you're not telling the truth. Because you cannot walk in darkness and walk in the light at the same time. <laughs> now, which one is going to be? Either you're hot or you're cold. <laughs> Either your is or your ain't, your tis or your taint. Which one is it going to be? Do you, you choose light or you choose darkness? Then verse number seven says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But now, did you see that condition in the top, in verse number seven? It says, if. If we walk in the light. Why? Because you have a choice. God is not going to make you do nothing. He's not going to make you. He could if he wanted to. He didn't want us to be robots. He could or we could. Are you talking about uh, uh, AI? <laughs> you talking about artificial intelligence. Oh, God, look, God is the master of everything. They're just learning what God already knew. God knows all about artificial intelligence, and he could have made you and I artificial intelligent, but he didn't do it. He gave us the free will to choose, okay, what we wanted to do. So we, that's why he says, if we walk in the light, if you can choose light or you can choose darkness, now, why would somebody choose darkness over light? Well, we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes here. But we see that people do. And matter of fact, the mass majority of people do. Because the Bible tells us broad is the way that leadeth to hell and destruction. And many there be that go thereby. So what, what, what is on this road of destruction? Darkness, the blind leading the blind. Everybody falling in the ditch. The person leading can't see. The person following can't see. Can't nobody see. But everybody say they're going somewhere. They're going somewhere. But they're not going to like it when they get there. 
James chapter 1, verse 17, write that down. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. You see that? Not only is he the light, he the father of light. God is the one who invented light in the beginning. When God created the heaven and earth, light be. He didn't say, let there be light. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In the Greek, beloved, light be. And light is still moving. What, 144,000 miles a second? Something ridiculous like that? <laughs> Light, light moves faster than sound. Light, it, it's amazing. Still got had the scientists trying to figure out <laughs> this thing called light. Well, Jesus came and bust the thing wide open. He said, well, I'm the light. And his father is the father of lights. So it's the same way Satan is the father of lies and the prince of darkness. See, everything evil, everything dark, huh? A God says, guess what? And I'm the father of lights. So if you want that light, I mean, you got to make a connection with me. Let me tell you something, baby. We don't need no middleman in this thing no more. That middleman day's over. That was back in the Old Testament when the old priest had to go in, the, pre, the high priest, and sacrifice the lamb and, and all that. Y'all know about all that prior to Jesus coming. Uh, we don't need all that right now. Jesus is your high priest. Matter of fact, you are a priest yourself. Once you give your life to Christ, see? And so the Lord says, amen, if you want this, come and check with me. I used to work at a bank years ago, years ago, years ago. And, and I worked around a certain culture of people and they came in that bank. And if they didn't, if things wasn't working out the way they wanted to work out, they say, wait a minute. They, they went straight to the top. They ain't want to talk to no head teller. They ain't want to talk to nobody in between. They say, take me to the top. Well, who's the owner here? And guess what? They had their uh, audience with them and got their way. They said, cut out the middleman. Well, this is what the Lord is saying right here. Cut out the middleman. I'm the owner. See, I own every good and perfect gift coming from above, including the light. <laughs> I'm the father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. See, God not going to get new on you. Sometimes people get new on you. You think everything cool, you know what I mean? Hey, this is my homegirl. You know, this is my Rasta, Ace Boom Coon, Dia Rye. You know what I mean? And, and you're feeling that kind of way. Then something happened, and then whoop, you don't know what happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not taking your calls. You know what I mean? Don't want to talk to you, rolling their eyes, talking about you. What in the world? See, something went wrong somewhere. See? And it could be a lot of possibilities, but we'll talk about that in a different lesson. Amen. But we don't have to worry about God because God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And he said, I don't change. And somebody needs to be happy about that. He said, if I'm the father of lights today, I'm going to be the father of lights tomorrow. <laughs> And the next day, and the next day, and the next day too. Psalms 84 and 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. He said, I'm the sun and shield. Now we look at that big planet in the middle of the sky, beloved, called the sun. Amen. You can't stare too hard at it because you don't want to go blind. Okay, but that sun, amen, is the source of light and the source of heat for the whole world. God put that together. We thank God for the sun. I thank God for the sun. Some people don't like it. We just got over three, four days of constant rain, thinking some more rain in the forecast. People want to cry when it's raining. I said, no, I'm not. I love the rain. I call it liquid sunshine. Why? Because the sun is always shining. But the Lord said, I'm your son. What? I am your light. I don't care if they look, I don't care if the city you live in had a blackout for three weeks. <laughs> so what? God is your son and shield. He's gonna get baby, you're gonna be able to see what you need to see and do what you need to do and go where you need to go. Remember when the children of Israel uh, left Egypt? 
huh? And the Bible says when they walked through the wilderness, he was a cloud or pillar to them during the day, and he was a fire by night. Don't you tell me what God won't do for his children, baby. Yeah. See, but for those who walk upright, you see, so we we got to do some walking. <laughs> now, it's good to talk. It's good to talk. It's good to talk. All right? Because we know that there's some power in your words. But you got to do more than talk. See, because Jesus said, this group over here, he said, they confess, but they don't possess. <laughs> in other words, he would say, they talk a good game. Uh, they got the dialogue and the rhetoric, huh? But they ain't walking nothing, see? But, beloved, here we got to do the walking because everything else, amen, don't even count. But as long as we do the walking, the Lord is saying he's going to be our sun, he's our light, he's our shield, and no good thing will he withhold, see? Anything that's permanent, God going to give it to you. <laughs> Anything you need to do God's will, God going to give it to you. All you need, God's got it. He's got everything you need. And he ain't got no problem. God don't play no games. Baby, you need it. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. Just ask me for it. Come, come talk to daddy. You have not because you ask not. Ask you shall receive. Seek you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Hey, my God, anything you ask. And now he say, abide in me, my words in you. You ask what you will. Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Bam, bam. People don't believe it. They don't believe it. I, maybe they trying to get there. I don't know, but they just don't believe it. But you better look. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You better get in that word and stay in that word and keep hearing the word. Look. I've been saved now for about 45 years, maybe more. I don't know. I don't do the math no more. It's been a minute. And I still do the same thing, but not as heavy when I first got saved. When I first got saved, what I used to do, because that was before all these fancy cell phones and fancy computers and all that. So because I got saved in uh, ooh, the 70s, something like that. All right. I would write my scriptures down on three by five card. Okay. I would have it in my pocketbook. If I'm on the bus, at break at work, on my desk at work, whatever, I would be memorizing scriptures. I would take one. Remember those old cassette tapes? Okay. 45 minutes on one side, flip it over, another 45 minutes on the other side. I would put 45 minutes worth of scriptures on one side, flip it over, put another 45 minutes, amen, of scriptures. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender, not the bar. I right? load it down. I would go to bed every night with those tapes, tapes playing. And in the middle of the night, when I wake up, I just flip the cassette over and listen to the other 45. So guess what? My body was asleep, but my spiritual man was soaking it all in. Baby, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> we hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Huh? Psalms 119.105, write that down. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. See? If the Lord is the light, now you can see your way. See, he can see your way. You ever, so I'm, let me ask a question to you drive, but those of you who drive. So it's real foggy outside. You're trying to drive, you're trying to get somewhere, but it's real foggy. You can't really see that good because the fog is so thick, you can almost cut it. All right. But you get in your car anyhow, you said you're going to make it. But you notice. Whenever you go a little distance, you can see now what's in front of you. You couldn't see it back then. But the, the, you travel a little bit at a time in the fog. And when you get in that certain place, you can see what's in front of you that you couldn't see what's behind you. But that's how it is when we're walking in the light. Baby, you just keep walking with God. You just keep walking. And what you couldn't see from a distance on yesterday, you can see today. You might not be able to see, amen, way in the future, but you can see clearer now, amen, what's ahead of you right now, amen, better than you can see yesterday because you didn't give up. Somebody said, don't get weary in well-doing, but in due season, what, we reap if we faint not. Let's look at St. John 3 and 20. Write that down. St. John chapter 3, verse 20 it says this. For everyone that doeth evil hate the light, neither cometh to the light, 
lest his deed should be reproved. Darkness don't like light. Darkness want to say dark. All right, so you're living in a house with a bunch of roaches, right? I can't stand them critics. All right, you turn the lights on, they just scattering all over the place. <laughs> Cause they don't want to, they don't want to be in the light. Guess what? Some folks that way. Not, and look, not only God's light, they don't even want to be in your light. When the light of God is in you, people don't want to be around you. Glory be to God. Because see, your light now is going to expose their sins, their darkness. And they don't want to be exposed because they like what they're doing. You know, they like creeping in the dark, living in the dark, sinning in the dark, whatever. You know what I mean? It, it's amazing how someone can get accustomed to living in the dark. But that's where they want to be. And you turn on the light and the light is brightening there. Well, somebody that's been sleeping, right? You come in and flip the lights on. Turn the lights back off. Turn the lights back off. See? And that's what the world wants you to do. And this is why they hate Christians. A lot of them hate Christians. They hate God. They hate God's word because it's too much light. <laughs> it's too much light. It's let me do. It's my thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. You can't tell me who the son can tell. Yeah, it's my thing. And they want to do that thing in the dark. Now they get so bold. Wait a minute. Trying to creep out in the light. Glory be to God. But they ain't getting me so far. See, because even though even though they're getting close to the light, they're still in darkness because their their hearts have not been grafted. Their hearts have not been changed. This is why God said, "Rend your hearts and not your garments." Glory be to the living God. So they 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 don't want to come to the light. So. You, you come in from work, everything's pitch black. All the lights is out. You come in, you turn the lights on. Where did the light, where did the darkness go? Went running in the closet, creeping up under the bed. <laughs> Scattering from light. The darkness. Now, people say when you turn on the light, the darkness disappears. No, the darkness is still there. It's just hiding. Because it don't want to be exposed. See? And that's the greatness of light. That's the power. When God created night, he created day, he created darkness, he created light, he called light the greater power. And that's the power that you possess as a born-again believer. Greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the world. St. John 8 and 12. St. John 8 and 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You see, life, which we're going to be talking about next week, Lord's willing, has life. Life has light. Now, just to give you a little sneak preview. Just because you're breathing right now don't mean you have life. Nah, baby. No, no. Stay tuned. The Bible calls you a walking dead man. You a walking dead man, a walking dead woman. I'm okay. My heart is beating. Baby, no, that don't give you life. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. It's going to be okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says here, if you follow, so how do you, so we're talking about abiding in Christ, okay? So as we said earlier, so now we're breaking it down on terms that you can understand, okay? Now, what's the difference between a carnal Christian and a spiritual Christian, okay? A person says, you know, but two people got saved on the same night, same night. They both went to the same revival service. They both went up to the altar. They both confessed their sins. They both, amen, made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior, okay? But now one of them is carnal. The other one is not. Why? Well, what are you talking about, Pastor? One of them decided to follow Christ, to be his disciple. 
to allow the Holy Spirit to lead them to be taught. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. The other person just went out there and just kept kept doing what they was doing. Didn't even want to change. Same old party, same old hearty, same old party, same old party, same old, same old, same old. Matter of fact, in some cases, it got worse. Because somebody told them, don't worry about it, baby. You came up to the altar that night and gave the Lord your, your life. No, that person needs to come on back to the altar and get saved for real this time. Amen. Glory be to God. Why? Because, all right, here we go again for the third time. Jesus says, John 8 and 12, I am the light of the world. He that followed me, you must be a follower of Christ. And that's not to say you're not going to make no mistakes. That's not going to say you're not going to fall. You're not going to go through some things. But you ain't going to stay there. And he's sure going to come and rescue and bring you out and show you the way. You're in training for reigning. <laughs> you don't get there overnight. It's called a process of sanctification. But you got to keep going. And this is what Brother Paul says when he said, I press towards the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. He didn't say, he looked some days, Paul said, I was sweating. Look, some days I was about to cuss some folks out and tell them where to go and tell them where to take their mama to. But he said, but I press, I press, I press. Why? Because I wanted to be a follower of Christ. I wanted to, I didn't want no distance between me and the light. <laughs> See, because if you get too much distance between me and the light, it's going to get dark. See? And if it's dark, you can't see your way, baby, because you got snakes. The Bible talks about this great and effectual door. You can read it in Genesis and you can read it in Corinthians. But he says, it's a great door open for you, a door opportunity for you. But guess what? There's a lot of adversaries. Where they at, Pastor? At the door. Ready to bite your neck off. Ready to stab you in your back. Huh? Glory, but, but and you ain't going to see them if you in the dark. <laughs> You got to stay close to the light and the light source so you can see your way. Hello, somebody. Let's look at St. John chapter 1. Verses start with verse 4. St. John 1 and 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. My God, meditate on that scripture tonight, beloved meditate on it. Time won't allow me to break it down. Amen. The way I could break it down. Amen. I could stay parked here for about two weeks just on this one scripture. See? But he said, the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now imagine with me for a moment. You got maybe 10 people living in a the cave. They've been there for months. All right. Rock over the cave. I mean, did no sunlight, no nothing. All they saw was pitch black. For six months straight. Right? Somebody got word that some people was in the cave. They came to rescue the people. They opened the cave. Okay? Amen. They let the light in. And the people that was living in the dark cave could not even comprehend that light had come in. Can you even imagine someone living in darkness in a dark house, in a dark car, in a dark city, in a dark cave, in a dark anything, and then light comes in and, and you don't see the light? You mean you that blind that you can't see light? Even Ray Charles and Helen Keller could see, see, see light. They could see the beam of light and they was legally blind. But some people are so spiritually blind that they cannot even comprehend light when light shines up in their dark situation and they're comfortable with it. They're good. They're good. They tell you in a minute, I'm good. I'm good. 
I got my booze. I got my boo. I got my numbers. I got this. I got it. Living in the on the at the bottom of the food chain. Tell me they good. But that's that mindset. See, stinking thinking. As a man thinks, so is he. It just works like that, baby. That's why the Lord tells us to get rid of that grasshopper mentality. God never called you a grasshopper, and God never called you a worm. God called you a queen, a king, a priest, and a royal, a priesthood, and dynasty. You're calling yourself a worm and a grasshopper. But that's that dark mentality. That's that dark mentality. That's that dark mindset. And guess what? Jesus came to break it all. Now, we was all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We was all born in that darkness. But we can be born again out of it. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. My God. Suki, suki, baby. Write these scriptures down. St. John uh, uh, chapter 1, 5, which I just shared with you, the, the darkness could not comprehend the light. Uh, that's that's one of some y'all need to write a thesis on that one. Glory be to God. That, that, that's what you call a loaded scripture right there. But this is a tragedy of the times and the culture that we are living in. We're living around a group of people, men and women, boys and girls, white and black, rich and poor who cannot comprehend light, get offended with the light. And they want to turn the light off. Well, they did kill Jesus, but not because they killed Jesus. They only killed Jesus because Jesus gave his life away. And they're going to try to kill you too. But guess what? They ain't going to be able to do that either. Because you shall live and not die and declare the words of the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 4, verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The only reason, because the darkness was so powerful. Remember now, Satan is the prince of this world, of the air. Satan is the prince of darkness. Satan has power, but God has all power. Now, let me tell you something. Don't call Satan a chump unless Jesus lives in you now. <laughs> let me help somebody out. Don't try to take the devil on unless you come into him in Jesus' name. David told Goliath, said, you coming to me uh, with a spear. Huh? He said, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Don't try to take the devil on unless you're coming in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. But here, glory be to God, God commanded the light because darkness was so powerful. See, this is why Jesus came. huh? But he commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Woo, out of, out of the, the Bible says, out of the root of dry ground as, as a tender plant. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Talking about Jesus coming forth. Ah, my God, sookie, sookie. Ephesians 5 and 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleep, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You want some of this light that I'm talking about? Well, guess what? Christ is the one that's going to give it to you. But what do you have to raise up? He's not talking about your physical sleep, although you might. some of y'all probably need to wake up out of some of that too. But he's talking about that spiritual stupor. That spiritual sleep, when you sleeping and Satan making circles around you, <laughs> planting evil seeds around you, because you don't know what's going on. Your body don't know what's going on when you sleep. Devil, what the devil wait till you sleep on sneak in the back door and do this and do that. <laughs> See, and then you got crops and stuff growing up, and you trying to figure out where did it come from? That's because Satan came in and planted some seeds while you were sleeping spiritually wake up it's time to wake up amen glory be to god hallelujah and the lord said he's going to give you the light uh three more scriptures i want you to write these down first john two and eight it says here hallelujah that 
the true light now shines. The true light. He says here, 1 John 2, 8, again, a new commandment I write unto you, which things is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shining. He said, I'm the light of the world. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. The work of the cross cannot be undone. When Jesus rose up from that grave on the third day, baby, it was a wrap. It, it was a done deal. He sealed the deal. It, it, it was over. Oh, my God. All power was given unto him. Hallelujah. And now that true light shineth. Amen. But you have to want to be a partaker of it. You got to want to be a partaker of it. Uh, but you can have it because it's nothing God will not withhold from you. See, God, amen, when even we think about the rain, we were talking about rain earlier. It rains on the just and the, in, on the, and the unjust. God doesn't say, well, I'm only going to give my goodness to those who are born again. No. God loves us all. He loves you just the way you are. He just loves you too much to keep you there. <laughs> Woo! Colossians 1 and 12. Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. This is your inheritance. See, like a good parent, see, they're going to leave their family more than a funeral bill when they die. <laughs> they're going to leave more than a bucket load of bills. They're going to keep them. They're going to make sure that they got things in order. Come on now. Got, got the will made out. Everything is in order. Got the funeral paid for. Got the insurance policy. Here's the deed to this, the deed to that. Here's the safe deposit key. Bum, bum. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Well, if we as people know how to take care of our inheritance, God said, I got one for you too. <laughs> I got one for my children. See, now everybody's not God's child. So I'm saying everybody's God's children. That is not scriptural. Everybody is God's creation. Yes, indeed. But to be God's children, you must be born again. Now, we already taught a lesson on that. And we got to come back. Amen. You come back or you look it up in our archives. You can find it for yourself. Okay. So there is an inheritance of the saints in light. It is your right to walk in the light, to walk in that goodness, to walk in that hope to walk in that gentleness, to walk in that blessing. That's your right. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to ask for it. You don't have to plead for it. Can you imagine a child sitting down at a dinner table with their parents begging for food? No. They sit down at the dinner table and say, Daddy, pass the bread. <laughs> Mama, pass the potatoes. Come on, y'all. The Lord has prepared us a feast. We have, amen, we are daily loaded with benefits. It's part of your, the, the inheritance package. It's part of your package. You know how when you get a, a good job and they got a benefit package, and in your package include this, 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 just all because you live, because you work here? God said, I got a benefit package. New mercies we see every morning. Revelation 22 and 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. You see that? The bright star. Here we talking about that light. Here we talking about that light. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus, the great I am. The great I am. The lily of the valley and the bright and the morning star. So now. As we wrap this up, so we've seen, I've given you validated scriptures, proof, substantiated, preacher, maybe about 20 scriptures here. All right? So you can study to show yourself approved without a doubt. Amen. Jesus is the light. But that wasn't good enough. That wasn't good enough. The odds I can't close without sharing this last scripture with you here today. Matthew chapter number five, verse number 14. And it reads, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, 
nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. The Lord says, I'm the light, but you abide in me, and I abide in me, and, and your words abide, and uh, you abide in me, and my words abide in you. So now you the light. Remember the woman in the Bible that talked about the crumbs from the rich man's table? She didn't care if it was cornbread bread crumbs because she knew that the crumbs of the cornbread held the same ingredients as the whole loaf. Well, baby, if we are abiding in God and he's the light, baby, you the light. Hey, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo! You're the light of the world. So God wants us to be a beacon of truth. He said, now, nobody, amen, lights a candle and put it under a, a bushel. Glory be to God. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You can't hide the light. And you have to know every place you go, God goes with you. You can't tell the Holy Spirit to wait on the other side of the hotel room for 30 minutes or two hours, however long you plan to be in there. I'll be back. No. Every place you go, God goes with you, including that room and in those activities. Huh? Every place you show up, he show up. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the living God. God lives in you. He tabernacles with you. Woo, my God. That's why, let me tell you something. This COVID uh, a thing, all right, it helped put some things in perspective. Yes, it's good to fellowship at the church house, beloved, but what God wanted everybody to know around those times, and he still wants you to know, is that you the house. You the church. Hello, somebody. Hey, my God, my God. So, glory be to God. So he does not want us to hide our lights. Now, you might say, okay, pastor, I, I don't think I'm hiding my light. Good. Let's go down this checklist here to make sure that you are not hiding your lights. We hide our lights, beloved, when we are quiet, when we should be speaking. I was in a supermarket the other day, and somebody said something about, God damn or something or something something they said no oh this one here said he was calling on Jesus yeah oh Jesus I said oh you know him too you know what I mean uh, and another one is saying God damn see so, you know you 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 can't you can't damn my God well however maybe you don't want to get that bold and bodacious but there is sometimes when we are quiet when we should it's good to speak brother love, love and we should not be quiet when it's time to speak because if you do, you're hiding your lights. Another way we hide our lights is when we go along with the crowd. You know cotton picking well. Amen. They're going in the wrong direction. You know cotton picking well that they're doing something and protesting for something that's not biblical. But you just want to be with the in crowd. You just want didn't want to stay home tonight. Huh? Glory be to God. So you're going to go with the crowd, but the Bible already tell you that the crowd is going in the wrong direction. The crowd is going in the way that leadeth to hell and destruction. So why you want to go with the crowd? That's because you're hiding your lights. You don't want everybody to know you're Christian. Another way that we hide our lives is when we deny God's truth. What you think about it? Well, uh, no, I didn't ask you that. I asked you for your opinion. Everybody else around the table has given their opinion about this. What's your opinion? But we want to deny God's truth as if we are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're hiding your light. You're putting your light under the bushel. Another way that we hide our lights is by letting sin dim our lights. Oh, baby, sin will take your lights out. <laughs> You know how when the electric company come and just turn the electricity off for non-payment? <laughs> uh, that's what sin is going to do if you don't confess your sin. That's why the Bible says lay aside the weight and the sin that keeps tripping you up. 
is champion. Every weight is not a sin, but every sin is a weight. And when you just keep repeating it, now, see, when, I'm not talking about when you sin, you ask God to forgive you, you confess your sins, he forgives you. That's something different. I'm talking about when you didn't really mean it in the first place. Because <laughs> here you go again, and here you go again. Matter of fact, you just love this thing. Here, this is, you know how you always have that one thing? <laughs> Most of us struggling with that one thing. Some of us got two, three, and four, five. But that one thing? And you really don't want God to deliver you from this one thing. You can help me over here, but God, let me leave me alone over here. Let me handle this. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody say, let it go. Let it go. Another way we hide our lights is by not explaining our light to others. I worked with a lady years ago. She said, well, Frida, there's like all these different religions out here. That how do I know the right one? How do I know which way to go? See, she, there was an honest question. See, and I explained to her, amen, Jesus Christ. I explained to her, glory be to God, that Christianity, amen, is the only religion in the whole world that still has a living Savior. The only one. Well, come to find out, Tangie did give her life to Christ. Amen. I'd like to hear from you, Tangie. Amen. Holla at a girl. Amen. Glory be to God. And last but not least, amen, we hide our lives when we ignore the needs of others. You see people needing, oh, baby, God going to handle it. Yeah, but they hungry right now. The baby's hungry. The children hungry. So let's say a word of prayer. Then God going to send you some food. No, why don't you go in your refrigerator and take them some? Why don't you cash out them something? Why, why don't you call Uber Eats or something and place an order and send some food over to that house? Talking about you going to pray. Just going to ignore the needs of others. Talking about God going to take good care of you. Beloved, I'm telling you, God is watching. He said, when you have done it to the least of my little ones, you have really done it unto me. And you hide your light. How can you say you are Christian? The Bible says do good to all men, especially to the household of faith. And you're going to ignore, uh, 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 look, look, so what? Okay, they didn't do the right thing with the money. That's between them and God. That's between them and God. You're going to really let them go hungry. I'm just going to teach them a lesson. Really? Really? Suppose God did you like that. Glory be to God. So, beloved, Jesus being the light is one component of how we abide in him. We abide in him by becoming the light. He is the example of that light. Amen. So now, beloved, we can glow. See, if you're the light, look, let me tell you something. If the light's on you, baby, you glowing. Everybody see you. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You boasting in the Lord. You boasting in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to glow like lights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if we are glowing like lights, then the light of Christ, God's love, amen, is brightly shining through us. And that's what God wants the world to see, the love, the love. How is how the world going to see the love? By you being the light, by you being this example. Hallelujah. By you walking with him. Because you can't be the light if you're not walking in the light. <laughs> you try. Some people try to be the light and walking in darkness. <laughs> Glory be to God. That's crazy. That's insanity. That's bewitchment. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But when people see the light of God flowing through you, guess what? They're going to want to step in. Yeah. yeah, yeah go to, I, I, Lord's willing, I'm going down to the beach this summer. Spend a few days down there. Amen. Glory be to God. I ain't going too deep in the water. It might be some whales, you know, flying around here, see, looking for some meat. Amen. But you know, I get my feet wet and stuff like that. But we, we like to run into the water and get our feet wet or whatever. Guess what? People going to want to step in when they see that light flowing through you. They say, I want a piece of this. I want some of this. Why? Because you're glowing. You're glowing. So, beloved, let us grow and let us glow. And as you grow, you will glow. Amen. Because the light of Christ is illuminated through your life. Like moving from the 15-watt bulb to the 60-watt bulb to the 75-watt bulb 
to the 100 watt bulb and they even got some 200 white bulb then they got some studio lights say that glory be to god and that's how we move from faith to faith and from glory to glory shine baby this little light of mine don't shut your light off from the rest of the world be a beacon of truth this little light of mine y'all remember that one i'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine everywhere i go amen and amen and amen we bless the lord amen good evening amen sister curious amen hallelujah hallelujah amen light is beautiful bless the lord bless the lord bless the lord amen any other comments here amen anybody want to say something put it in any questions amen pertaining to the lesson tonight put it in uh, we want to continue here on next week jesus said not only is he the light of the world he says that he was the light he also says he was the way oh my god sucky sucky uh but see you have to know these things if you're going to abide in him so you have to know who you abiding in <laughs> and you got to know who's abiding in you huh so would, 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 would you would you marry somebody that you just met <laughs> huh if y'all going to become one huh the glory be to god and you you know he what you only know this man <laughs> he'll make a love to the devil glory be to god but you want to get to know him a little bit that intimacy into into me is intimacy amen and this is the beautiful part about abiding and it bring let me tell you something when a man and a woman become intimate especially in their fruitful years they bring forth them pretty springy babies huh guess what you're gonna bring forth some too when you're intimate with the lord because he said then shall you bear much fruit 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold or maybe you're gonna have some babies uh, it might not be the type of baby somebody, but your dreams, your visions. Come on, somebody. The things you pray for, what you've asked for, granting you your heart's desire, exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. This is what's necessary to abide. Amen. So let us continue to grow. And let us continue to glow and let that light shine. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. Amen. Glory be to God. You know, we have a lot going on in our ministry. Amen. We have our 5 a.m. service on social media. Amen. The morning prayer. Hallelujah. We start our morning off in prayer. It still be dark over here. Glory be to God. But we praying. Then we have our 6 a.m. platform on um, blogtalkradio.com. And come on and get a spiritual breakfast. Have a seat at the breakfast table. And we meet there seven days a week. Amen. And then we have the altar of prayer. You can call in and prayer warriors will pray with you, pray for you. We do that twice a day. Amen. On uh, at uh, Monday through Fridays. Amen. So visit our website, find out more about our ministry. Peer, uh, we ask that you would like us here on our YouTube teachings. We also ask that you would subscribe to the channel and we ask that you would share with your family and share with your friends. Amen. Glory be to God. And if this uh, lesson, this, this word has been a blessing to you, we ask that you would sow into the word. Amen. Sow into God's word because that's the only thing that's guaranteed to bring forth fruit when the seed is sown into good soil. Amen. Hallelujah. And God's seed is incorruptible. It's good seed. And you best believe this is good soil over here in this part of the vineyard. So I don't see any questions in the chat. Amen. I'm still learning how to do this, y'all. I'm still learning. The guy said, despise not small beginnings. I didn't wait until I completed some social media class and all that and all that to get started. I said, we're going to learn as we go. Because the Lord took, gave me the green light, and I told the Lord yes. Amen. And so I'm still learning. So if you did have a comment and I don't see it, please forgive me. Amen. And we'll make sure that we address it. You can also always 
email us at lifewordjesus at gmail.com. We welcome your emails. Submit your prayer requests on that. And we will pray with you and we will pray for you. Amen. And it's our pleasure to do so. All right. So, Father, we want to say thank you for this time in your word. Thank you for teaching us how to abide. And, Father God, we abide by not walking in darkness. We abide by walking in the light, with the light, till we become the light. Father God, in the name of Jesus. And then when we become the light, pe people will not be able to, Father, tell the difference between us and Christ. Because you, you told us until this mind be formed in you. You said renew, you want our minds renewed, Father, until we have the mind of Christ, until this mind be found in you, until Christ be found in you. And that's why Jesus said, in greater work shall you do. And when we walk in the light, the devil can't tell the difference either. He don't know if he's dealing with Jesus or dealing with us. Because <laughs> there's power in the light. There's authority in the light. There's blessings in the light. There's, there's brightness in the light. There's eternity in the light. And we thank you for the light of men. Father, we pray for men and women, boys and girls everywhere who are not walking in that light. Father, we pray that you will give them the will to accept Jesus Christ in their hearts as Lord and Savior, to invite them in. Hallelujah. God, do that. If I'm talking to you tonight and you do not know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins, just repeat after me, 30 seconds. Father, I ask that you would forgive me for my sins. I confess all of them before you. I ask Jesus to save my soul, to come into my heart, to rule as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for erasing my name out of the book of death. Thank you for confirming that my, lamb, my name is now written in the lamb, confirmed in the Lamb's book of life. Now help me to follow you on the balance of my days and to walk in that light, to become the light and to be used by you for your glory. Amen, amen, and amen. Bless the Lord. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in. God's been waiting on you. We've been waiting on you. So good to have you with us. Amen is our prayer. Father, we bind every spirit of retaliation. We thank you for everyone that signed in tonight, everyone that's going to be listening on replay, God, we ask, Father God, for your blessings, your spirit, your power to move in their lives, in their homes, and every area of their life. And most of all, Father, that we will continue to glow as we grow, Father, that we might get you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We bind absolutely every spirit of retaliation in the name of the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Ghost, and we seal this prayer. Hallelujah. By the word, by the blood, and by the spirit to decree and declare and declare and decree that Satan is defeated, darkness is dispelled, and Jesus Christ is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. Amen and amen. All right. Amen. Every Wednesday, amen, at 8 o'clock, set the clock, subscribe. Amen. Hallelujah. Send your notifications. Amen. And we want to continue, amen, to teach on the abiding factor and how to live that abiding life, that whatever we ask for, we get 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Apostle Dr. Alfreda, Philadelphia, my pleasure. Amen. Hallelujah to be in the Lord's service. Amen. Good night, and thank you again. Amen for stopping by.